All right. Okay. Go. Well, now we have Marvelous Marco versus Sharp. And could you guess who the characters were going to be? I could have because these players have been sticking to their main all day long. And guess what? We're going to Pokemon Stadium 2. And let's get Losers Finals started. I'm really, like, excited to see these two play. Because, like I was saying earlier, you know, these two really don't have any data to go off of outside of what's been shown on the stream. And guess what? Like, you can watch someone play, but it's a little bit... It's a much different feeling... Uh, when it's like your personal experience playing against the characters or these players. So, okay, with Arsene out, no surprise that Marco would in fact be uh, taking his time, moving a little bit slower, taking uh, a little bit of extra time getting back to the ledge and, and on main stage, trying to burn as much Arsene timer as he possibly can. And that's what I'm expecting him to do. I'm going to chill, dangling with the Zare. Rolling onto stage, and oh, okay, we actually got to see the Tetracon use its other property, which is a reflector. Yeah, it's pretty applicable when it comes to projectiles, but it's kind of rarely seen at times. All right, Marco looking to get in. I like that play, though. He goes for boomerang, and then he immediately goes for forward air, trying to call out sharp for going in out for an out of shield option or jumping out of shield just to get away from Marco. That's yeah, true, but dashing it just a little bit forward with guns. That was honestly a little too close to comfort for me, especially with the way that they were drifting down. I would have been very scared that Sharp would have gotten like hit, possibly stage spiked. But we see projectiles trading. Guess what? The Aha is a little bit stronger because it has that dot. So we're going to see that damage constantly tick up onto Marvelous Marco. Sharp looking very strong here in game one. Yep, just shoot yeah. him down. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. Good for Marco to go for forward tilt. It's really good for calling get ups, but also it hits behind Toon Link as well, so it's able to call out rolls. But unfortunately, man, he was feeling the pressure from Sharp. And Sharp will just take game one right off the bat. I didn't even see how he lost the last stock. What happened? No, I, I, you're, I'm with you, man. I blinked and I missed it. That was crazy. Okay, well, Sharp looking really strong. He's like, Sharp is uh, definitely with the mindset that he is on a timer and he wants to get to Grand Finals as soon as possible. Get that run back going. 1-0 Sharp at the moment. And honestly, there wasn't much for Marvelous Marco to for data-wise. Yeah. Like, how do you adjust to that? Like, okay, so far we have he, he can't recover low <laughs> because he got pop-popped. And, well, uh, well, that's the thing. If if that's Toon Link that's what ups, I got. <laughs> if Toon Link ups to recover low, there are things to supplement that. He can pull out a bomb, in which it gives him a second hero. I'm sorry, spin attack. He can also go for Zara as a recovery option, and even then, you're still at the mercy of getting hit from Joker from a ledge trump, or possibly getting hit by a downer. There are ways that Marco can mix it. It just depends on the situation, and the, if he has caused Sharp to hold shield, if he's called Sharp to respect the boomerang, or even avoid trying to go for offstage. Nonetheless, though, Marco will get this back throw, and he's looking to get the bomb out and try to hold something on stage. I do like that play because he went for an on-shield option and looking to see if Sharp was going to jump out of it. Okay, and there's the, the, the bomb at the ledge. I unfortunately, just misspaced. I think he wanted to blow up at the ledge so he could pressure in case Sharp was waiting just a little bit too long. It looked like he was also waiting for the roll, but just, again, a misspaced bomb completely tore down that entire setup. But yeah. Sharp is able to escape, and here we go. He's playing evasive again, trying to fall down with guns, looking to get his approach with Nair and then convert. I mean, to my knowledge, this is the first time uh, I've ever seen Marco play against Joker in general, but that's an excellent roll read. Good coverage using the boomerang, but also good conditioning against Sharp. But yeah, like I was going to say, this is the first time I've first seen Marco play against uh, a Joker in particularly. And honestly, even in SoCal, there's not that many Joker mains. That's true. Very true. So I'm sure the experience could be a little bit lacking on Marco's side. But the bomb and the back air are going to send Marco off stage, Looking for the Tetracon, but unable to find it as Marco grabs the ledge. And the up tilt going to whiff. We see a lot of uh, whiffed buttons coming from Sharp. And honestly, Marco... Is taking a little bit of extra damage, but it could be could be a lot more. Like, yeah. This could be much heavier punishes. 
even though Marco hasn't played against many chokers in SoCal, Marco is doing an excellent job just taking this matchup as it goes. The bomb will give him a second hero, hero spin here, but don't worry, he's able to get the ledge. And unfortunately, the, the spin attack is not going to be enough there with Sharp sensing it out this time around. But a forward air with Sharp off the stage, Marco with the stage, and the bomb pull. What a play! Because he covers get up options, the roll, the shield, and he, he had it all covered, man. I have to give it to him. Yep, of course, you know, Sharp maybe having second thoughts about pushing the R button at the ledge. That is the second time that his roll got caught and it cost him a stock. But, wow, that was a quick arson. I guess the multi-hit of the... Um, oh, that's right, he was holding down B. He had the counter out during the, the hero spin. Or the spin attack, whatever. Down throw. Down air. Into F smash. Arsene just got depleted. Yeah. Okay, great spacing on that Eptil, getting the tipper of the of the sword, sending Sharp at a very horizontal angle. Oh, getting the re-grab instead of going for a smash attack. Yeah, Sharp is playing. Sharp is definitely looking for to get rack up a little bit more damage before he tries to end go for a kill but a two stock from marvelous marco to answer back yeah and marco honestly tying it up here with sharp what a good play too and great adaptation like i said even though even even though like he like i said there's not a lot of there's honestly like i think lord bahamut also shout outs to lord bahamut for the 39 months here with the prime dude thank you very much because you remember time after time but also, uh, shout outs to Last, great commentator, of course, with Team Liquid. And we also will be seeing him on the mic as well here at the Smash.gg ladder presentation that we have. But yeah, even though Marvelous Marco hasn't played against many Jokers, like I said, he's just learning this as it goes. The only notable Joker meme that Lord Bahamut also mentioned is Eon. And even then, we don't see Eon in the online space, if at all. Yeah, Eon really is a player that's taking a step back, especially during the uh, online era that we're currently in. I will tell you one thing about Eon right now. He is definitely playing Valorant, and he is actually ranked Immortal, for those of you wondering what Eon has been up to. But unfortunately, the only thing Marco is up to is going for Nera out of the ledge and losing that stock. That's not how you want to see Game 3 go. Yeah, game three again, starting out a little similar to game one. Oh, with these quick stocks getting depleted from Marvelous Marco. We got double back air from Sharp. Oh, Marco swinging back. Oh, no. no not Marco. again, not again, not okay, again. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, he's using, he's using the stage jump to basically just get back on. That was still a very scary situation, nonetheless. Yeah, I, I thought he was gone. Like I knew that he could make it back with the with the the, the wall jump and then the B because it does have pretty decent recovery. Uh, but still, just seeing him fall, free fall down towards the bottom again. Like uh, we've already seen him lose so many stocks like that. That would have been so unfortunate here in game three. But Arsene is back, and this is actually like probably the worst case scenario for oh, Marco. This He's is getting hit with Bob. He's getting pushed off. And look at that, getting trapped by Aha again in the air, close range, not where you want to be. He honestly lost the first stock to like an unfortunate circumstance. And he's just taken so much damage to the point that Sharp is just looking at just a, a three stock. And Marco still looking to pick up the pieces from the first two stocks he lost. He started off really strong on game two, but unfortunately coming down to game three and Sharp with just this dominant lead. Yeah. Sharp just looking. I mean, I don't know what Sharp we saw in game two, but this is definitely game one Sharp. This is the Sharp who was on the hunt, looking for the kill, continuously trapping his opponent. And like you can just see just how much of a lead he was been able to, uh, to really put onto Marvelous Marco. Oh, 
on wow. the punish on the platform there, and Sharp wow. will move with this 2-1 against wow. Marco, having such a rough time here. But still, you know what? I have to give it to the boy Marco, man. Still holding it up for SoCal, even in losers' finals. Give it up for Marvelous Marco, ladies and gentlemen.